Another important disease, which is a multifactorial disease, that is mastitis. Generally, we are not giving that much importance to the mastitis in small animals, but still, this mastitis is causing a lot of problem in the farming of this particular sector. So, the mastitis observed gen nowadays, uh, the incidence of mastitis it ranges from ten to thirty percent in the sheep flocks, or as well as in the goat farming. That's why. Uh, it is one of the important diseases that needs to be considered in the sheep and goat sector also. So mastitis in sheep, it may be because of the multiple teat canals or because of the leaky teats, because of deficiency to phosphorus, uh, which it leads to the environmental mastitis by the E. coli. And the species affected in goat, 30 to 40 percent get affected while giving birth and 20% uh, during the time of weaning or 70% uh, during the time of dry period. And in case of sheep, 30 to 40 percent at the time of giving birth and 20 to 30 percent during the weaning or dry period. This is the percentage of getting it with the mastitis in case of sheep and goat during two different periods, either during the time of giving birth or during the time of dry period. These are the different organisms that are responsible for the mastitis in sheep and goat. In case of uh, sheep, the mastitis is mainly caused by Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus agalexia. Whereas in case of goats, mastitis is mainly caused by Mycoplasma agalexia, Mycoplasma mycoides, and then comes to the Staphylococcus. In case of sheep, Manhemia hemolytica also plays an important role for the uh, occurrence of this particular disease, along with other organisms like E. coli, Clostridium perfringens, Pseudomonas, and Corinibacterium. And in case of goats also, there are several organisms that are responsible for this disease. And to reduce the incidence of mastitis, one uh, body score or a body condition is high and tight uh, udder is very, very important to reduce the occurrence of the mastitis. And it should be above the level of hawk. So if the animal is having pendulous udder, it is more likely to develop mastitis because of damage by bruising or lacerations. And even the lambs or kids difficult, feel difficult to nurse or for nursing. So this is, these are the different other confirmations. The first one is perfect, whereas the rest of the ones are showing possibility for the occurrence of mastitis. And abnormal teeth canals or abnormal teeth are the ones which are responsible for the occurrence of mastitis in sheep and goat. The clinical observations, the udder may be abnormal, swollen, hot, red, painful. Milk may be may contain black tinged or yellow. Texture may be thick, lumps or very watery. Maybe fall odor. Lambs kids refuse to nurse. Animal may be visibly ill with fever or depressed and off feed. So mild clinical mastitis, severe clinical mastitis, and chronic mastitis are observed in this in these animals. So mild clinical mastitis, abnormality of milk such as flakes, clots, and watery discharge. And udder may be swollen, hot, or sensitive. Severe, hot, hard, sensitive udder, painful, fever, rapid pulse, depression, weakness, loss of appetite. Chronic, prolonged subclinical form turns to show signs like lumps in the udder from the walling of bacterial and forming a connective tissue. So these are the two animals that are showing signs of mastitis. And this is the mastitis milk showing different signs. And blueback condition is also observed because of gangrenous mastitis. So severe mastitis results into gangrene. Udder appears dark red and hard and then turns to blue. Affected gland will not be functional and requires a surgical removal of the affected portion. And the subclinical mastitis, it is most common in small ruminants reduced milk production, increased bacterial and somatic cell counts. Generally, we are not uh, taking these somatic cell counts, but if anyone is interested to observe the somatic cell counts, the normal somatic cell count range is up to 5 to 10 lakhs. Generally, if it is less than 5 lakhs, the milk is normal. If it is more than 10 lakhs, the milk is showing subclinical mastitis. Other generally appears normal, may start as clinical and progress to chronic and subclinical. Treatment antibiotic therapy Amoxicillin clavulanic acid is the one which is uh, showing good results along with that cephalosporins. So generally, in order to go for antibiotic treatment in these animals, try to use lower generation antibiotics. Don't go for higher generation. Then mastitis prevention at the time of weaning. Cut out all the grains three to five days prior to weaning and switch to a lower quality forage to decrease the amount of milk being produced and reduce all feeding, 
12 to 24 hours prior to weaning. So if you reduce the feeding of the animal prior to the weaning, so that there is reduced milk production in the gland, in turn reduces the occurrence of mastitis.